So welcome. Welcome to this candlelight vigil for peace. And uh, this evening is hosted by the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Palisades. And we're all deeply grateful that you're all here. So as we begin, before we begin, ultimately, I'd like to acknowledge that as a UU community, we are shocked and shocked, horrified, and heartbroken by last week's atrocities of terror inflicted upon the people of Israel by Hamas. We are also profoundly saddened and, uh, and also heartbroken by the ongoing suffering, suffering of innocent victims in Israel, in Gaza, in the war in Ukraine, and in the ethnic cleansing of Nagora, Karabakh. Rather than our usual Thursday conscious conversation, this evening we are gathering in a sacred container to ground ourselves in our humanity, to actualize our intentions for the end of suffering of innocent people and to pray for peace. This event will be recorded and posted in its entirety on YouTube, available for the public. Most, if not all of us, as I've mentioned, are outraged with strong personal opinions. But we ask you to leave those opinions for another gathering to come. So this evening, we invite you to please honor the sacred container that we are holding as we share our intentions through music, poetry, prayers, and affirmations. So to begin, I'd like to sing, ring a singing bowl before we move into our, our next part of our opening. And also, before I ring this bell, I just want to thank all of you again for being here. And I want to especially thank many guests, many ministers, ministers that are coming here um, to participate, to bring their teaching, to bring their hearts and their time and their what they put their life into, to, to bring it into action. So. We're just so grateful that you're all here. Thank you. Let us begin. Good evening, Pippa. So I pass this on to you, Reverend Pippa. Thank you so much. Pippa is awake in South Africa, and it's one or two in the morning. One. So please, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Sonia. I don't know if you want to do this with me. Uh, if you have a chalice that you wanted to light, I know that you wanted to set the intention with yours first. I do, but I wanted you with me since we're joining in this part. Mm -hmm. Thank sure. You. So everyone, I have a reading and I thought it would be appropriate for us to, to light our chalices this evening or our candles to a chalice reading and it's called the origin story and it's by Astasi Brosh and I'm going to light this candle before I read and then I'm going to invite Can uh, Pippa to light hers and then I'll invite all of us to light this burning flame represented hope during the bleakness of World War II. A sign of refuge, meaning death was circumvented, if only for that night. The emblem a flame in a chalice, assuring wary refugees fleeing Nazi persecution that for a time they had found safety and respite. 
Today, this beacon shining bright reminds us to summon the strength to extend care and love to those in need for it right. We ignite this flame tonight, today for our shared humanity. Pippa, please join me. And here in the Southern Hemisphere, from the southern tip of the great continent of Africa, traversing time and distance with love and solidarity, I join you by lighting the chalice and in the spirit of Ubuntu, honoring the fact that I am because we are. Friends, please, please light your chalices now. Pippa, would you like to share more about this song before we start? Thank you, Sonia. <clears throat> On Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, a date that many of us, of course, remember starkly. Many of us very close and upfront to what was happening on that terrible day. A poet on the other side of the United States in Colorado saw the unfolding of what was happening in New York City and found herself writing a poem that would become a staple in moments like this, where she took the word wage, which is normally collocated with war, and instead named it Wage Peace. And I'm going to read it very briefly, and then I'd love you to enjoy hearing it through the medium of song. The, the Women's Choir of Cincinnati took these words and um, have put it to music. And somehow in these moments, music carries that sense of poetry and almost transmutes it into prayer. So let me put the words into the chat now for you. You should see it here. And before I start, let me say that for those of you who are familiar with Buddhism will know that there is a, a um, practice in Buddhism called Tonglen, which from a British uh, perspective and principle says that we are the crucible through which we can transmute pain into promise, violence into hope, hatred into love. And it's a, it's a breathing practice and hence her words, which I'll share with you now. Wage peace with your breath, Breathe in firemen and rubble. Breathe out whole buildings and flocks of red wing blackbirds. Breathe in terrorists and breathe out sleeping children and freshly mown fields. Breathe in confusion and breathe out maple trees. Breathe in the fallen and breathe out lifelong friendships intact. Wage peace with your listening, hearing sirens, pray loud. Remember your tools, flower seeds, 
clothes spins, clean rivers, make soup, play music, memorize the words for thank you in three languages, learn to knit and make a hat, think of chaos as dancing raspberries, imagine grief as the outbreath of beauty or the gesture of fish. Swim for the other side. Wage peace. Never has the world seemed so fresh and precious. Have a cup of tea and rejoice. Act as if armistice has already arrived. Celebrate today.
As we move from this powerful piece, let's all take a deep breath in as we're in, in the process of breathing and just keep settling ourselves through this, this vigil this evening. All in. And all out. So we have many, a, a, a whole a monitor full of wise people with beautiful hearts who I know have come to share. And I, you know, this is now a point where we have some space. I know, Paul, if you had something you would like to share, I don't know if you had anything in mind specifically, yes. Would you like to do it now? Thank Hello, you. everyone. Thank you so much for being here, Paul. Um, I didn't. I thought about when when Sonia told me about the vigil. I I thought about writing something, and I tried that. I attempted to do that three or four times, but everything I started to write just was. Um, to put it as young people often do, just it was just lame. It was just um, it was words that, in light of the enormity of everything that's happening around us right now, just seemed so small and um, not apropos, not applicable to what the world is going through, to what the people of Israel are going through, to what the people of Gaza are going through, the people of Ukraine, and other, the many other places around the world where violence just seems to be exploding. And um, I also didn't want to write because as Sonia said at the very beginning, all of us have opinions, some of them strong opinions about what's happening. And that's best left for a different time, a time sometime in the future when things have settled down a bit, when tempers have lowered a bit. And I thought about what I could say. And the only thing that I could think of is that in my own way, the own way, my own way that I pray, which is not like perhaps many of you do or others or, that we know do, but my prayers to the great source of love which surrounds us and which in which we live and move and have our being, as I always say. My prayer is that that source of love will descend powerfully, not only in the Mideast, not only in Palestine and, and Israel, but around the world, and especially in our own hearts, and temper in our own hearts, our own feelings. There's a story of 
um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu that he told when he was a young boy. He was walking along the street with his mother. And back then in apartheid South Africa, when a black person was walking along the street and a white person was approaching, the black person was expected to step out into the street and nod their head in respect to the white person passing. And one day he was walking down the street with his mother and a white man was approaching them. And before they could step out into the street, as they were supposed to do, the white man did that. And he nodded his head out of respect to that little boy, Desmond Tutu, and his mother. And he was shocked by this. And his mother told him that the man that they had just passed was an Anglican bishop. I forget his name. But that bishop, when Desmond, that was when Desmond Tutu said that he decided he wanted to be, or she also said that the man was a, a man of God. And that's when he decided that he wanted to be an Anglican priest. And more importantly, be a man of God. And that priest, that Anglican bishop, became his mentor. And we know where that led. One of the greatest spiritual leaders of our time, Desmond Tutu. And I pray that there comes a point where we can all just, when necessary, step into the, out off the sidewalk and nod our heads out of respect for the other. I, I also want to just read a poem. And that poem that Pippa read was phenomenal. This is a poem by a poet. Her name is Warsan Shire. You may have heard of her. She's a British poet. She was raised, uh, she, her parents were Somali who lived in Kenya. But she grew up in Great Britain. And this is a poem entitled, What They Did Yesterday Afternoon. They set my aunt's house on fire. I cried the way women on TV do, folding at the middle like a five-pound note. I called the boy who used to love me, tried to okay my voice. I said hello, and he said, Wash on, what's wrong? What happened? I've been praying, and these are what my prayers look like. Dear God, I come from two countries. One is thirsty. The other is on fire. Both need water. Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap ran my fingers across the whole world and whispered, where does it hurt? It answered, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank there you. We go. Thank you, Paul. I'm so grateful to have you and your wisdom and your voice. Would anybody else like to share, especially Laureen or Debbie or Heidi, along with others, please let me know. I'll raise your hand or uh, Laureen. Yeah, I'll raise my hand. Thank you, Paul, for that beautiful poem and thank you all for being here um as Sonia invited me I was thinking what am I going to say and this is just kind of a reflection that I want to offer you know what we see in the outer world is purely a reflection of the inner whether we're looking upon the globe or within our home what we see reflects who we are it's either our direct reflection of who we've been or an indirect one of who we've been unwilling to be. The world can return to us our stance for the greater good or the cost of sitting down for the smaller personal benefit. 
it doesn't matter if our gaze is upon Gaza or our hearts are with Ukraine or our eyes witness the displacement of Armenians. It doesn't matter if we're warring with our family or pissed at our neighbor or oppressing our team at work. It doesn't matter if we're beholding the legalized ostracizing of the LGBTQ community or the institutionalized oppression of the Black community or the systematic rewilding and trafficking of the migrant and refugee, refugee communities. It doesn't matter if we're tolerating the subjugation of women or the shooting of our children in schools or the decimation of our planet and its animal life. The details of what is happening doesn't matter if we won't have it matter that it's happening on our watch. If we won't have it matter that it's happening in the terrain of our hearts before it's reflected in the territories of the world. Each and every one of these dynamics I mentioned are fundamentally the same a reflection of an ongoing race to separate our humanity from one another and be justified about it, rather than be with the truth that we are one human race and be vigilant about that. So as we gather to vigil, to keep watch and pray, to stay awake as we witness a world consumed by our humanity at sleep, the question is, who will we be after this vigil? Will we be the candle in our families, at our workplaces, in our schools, at this church, to light a path back to our relatedness? Will we uphold our interdependent relationship in our speaking and in interacting with one another, but especially in how we listen to one another? Will we be peace? Will we be love? We cannot have what we are unwilling to become. Social change is not possible without personal transformation. Therefore, let us be peace. Let us be love. Let us be the harmony in a symphony of discord. Let us look upon the world where we are and be vigilant in negotiating peace and demonstrating love. Our world, our lives depend upon it. Thank you. I think we need another deep breath. Thank you, Laureen. So very eloquently put. I think it's valuable sometimes between our sharing to just pause for a moment. To just let it all sink in. Thank you, Lorene, and thank you again, Paul. Is there someone else who would like to share? Lisa, please unmute yourself. I've chosen the sharing from the Tao Te Ching uh, to remind us that there are no winners here. Good weapons are instruments of fear. All creatures hate them. Therefore, followers of Tao never use them. The wise men prefer the left. The man of war prefers the right. Weapons are instruments of fear. They are not a wise man's tools. He uses them only when he has no choice. Peace and quiet are dear to his heart, and victory no cause for rejoicing. 
If you rejoice in victory, then you delight in killing. If you delight in killing, you cannot fulfill yourself. On happy occasions, precedence is given to the left. On sad occasions, to the right. In the army, the general stands on the left. The commander-in-chief on the right. This means that war is conducted like a funeral. When many people are being killed, they should be mourned in heartfelt sorrow. This is why a victory must be observed like a funeral. That's beautiful. So appropriate. Thank you, Lisa. Hmm. Would anyone else like to share? Debbie Schlein and then Arlene Hope Scala. Please unmute yourself, Debbie. Thank you. Thank hey. you. For Thank you so much and so grateful to be here with all of you. So I, I'd like to um, read a poem to you that I have loved forever. It's probably one of my favorite, favorite, oops. Uh-oh, there goes my, you, you know what, Let, let's, I'm going to take my dog because she's going a little crazy and maybe I'll come, come back to me after. Sure. <laughs> she has perfect timing just at the right time okay <laughs> thank you I'll mute myself for now Arlene please hey, hey thank you to everybody um, who has been reading thank you for all of you who have organized this wonderful peace vigil and this is a poem uh, that I'd like to read by Amanda Gorman. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left. With every breath from our bronze pounded chests, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Beautiful. Paul, Paul's going to be jumping off. I just wanted to thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. It thank means you, so Paul. much to all of us for you to be here. Please, please do this more. Okay. And Arlene, sorry to cut, cut, cut that short, but thank you so much for that reading. The brilliant Amanda Gorman. Yeah. So would somebody else like to share? Mickey. Yeah, do we just want to have poetry? Is that it? Or could we just talk about the effect that's happening in our town? Well, this was really, uh, we weren't really going mm -hmm. to talk really so much on this. Okay. Um, I would say that for another time, we we're going to stay more specifically in the focus towards peace. If it's specifically yeah. towards peace um, that's happening in your town, that um, that would add to this. We are trying to keep um, the energy of a of a service. Okay. So if you have something to share that, that feels in that alignment with that energy. Yeah, well, we're trying. That's all I could say. 
We have two very large communities of of Orthodox and Muslim. Mm. And uh, we're working today to get get people together to to bring peace uh, to our town. Mm. And I'm glad they're talking and working and people of both groups. So I just pray that we can accomplish it. We've done it before with other things. So that's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is what we long to hear. So that's that that in that action in itself is a prayer. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all you do to make those changes in the world and in your town. Would somebody else like to share? Debbie, is now a good time again? Please. A happy dog. Well, <laughs> I think this is meant to be that I have one of my dogs with me. She was asserting herself saying, hey, what about me? And you'll get it when I read the poem that I will share with you. Actually, the fact that Bella Baby is with me, it's actually perfect. And I think she knew it. Okay, so this poem, again, as I said, I have loved this poem forever. Some of you may be familiar with it. It is a poem by a wonderful poet called um, Wendell Berry. Um, He's written many, many poetries, but this, the name of this poem is called The Peace of Wild Things. Mm -hmm. And it gives me the goosebumps every time I read it, literally. So, okay, here goes. Okay. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night, at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought or grief with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Beautiful. Thank you, Debbie. You like I, I, it's it's a relatively short poem, and there's I have another favorite poet of mine, David White. Mm. He, if you've ever heard him, you know he he'll read his poetry and he'll read it at least twice, and he'll read it slowly because for some reason that second reading it can really like just sink in. So no, no pressure. But if you like, I'd be happy to read it one more time. I don't that, need. You're good? You're okay? Okay. Okay. You can read it again if that moves you. Yes, please. Okay. Or I, I, do you want me to maybe wait maybe more towards the end? When it, when no, 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 no. No, right okay. now. Okay. Okay. The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests, in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things, who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the peace of the world and am free. 
Thank you. It's my wild thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wonderful, wonderful sharing. Thank you. I saw some other hands. Barbara Namias. Oh my God, how nice to see you. Reverend Barbara Namias. You're still muted, Deb. Uh, Barbara Namias. You're still muted, Barbara. Still muted. Well, if you if you could find yourself, we'll move on to somebody else, but if you could find a way to unmute, we'll come back to you. Okay? Thank you. I'm glad you we're glad you're here. I saw another hand. Was that uh, Rhonda? Did Rhonda is Rhonda still on? She's not. Okay. Was there another hand? If not, I have something to share. Okay. So I have a sharing, and it is uh, actually not mine. That I'm I'm not going to read it myself. This is um, I'd like to share a recording by Sister Monica Clare. Many of you have met her. She's come and spoke with us at our congregation. And uh, she's an Episcopal nun. And um, she, she is offering on TikTok an interfaith prayer of comfort and connection and hope and peace. And it's by Rabbi Haviva Nir David. I'm going to play this for you now. Nur David is a rabbi living in the Galilee in Israel. She has been working for many years with groups that are composed of both Israelis and Palestinians working for reconciliation, healing, and peace. And all of them condemn all acts of violence and terrorism. They also advocate for all the innocent people who are caught up in this violent struggle. Haviva wrote a prayer for the most recent gathering of people of different sides of this struggle in hopes that it would help to bring more reconciliation between the two groups. It's a beautiful prayer and it's much better than anything I could have come up with. So please let's pray it together. May the one who blessed those before us bless all those suffering from the devastating atrocities and their aftermath in our midst. May the souls of those departed because of violence and hate and its reverberations rise and find peace. And may their loved ones find comfort somehow, some way. As the psalmist reminds us, God is with the brokenhearted. And may it be your will, divine womb, that we are able to bring home those precious humans taken captive or still missing. As Jeremiah laments, a voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Please God, bring your children home. And please, source of life, give us strength to continue loving and building trust and friendship across boundaries and amidst the hate and separation. As Jesus preached on the Mount, but I tell you, love your enemies and those called your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may all be children of God, who causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and who sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Please divine force flowing through all, give us strength to carry on to cling to hope, to the belief that one day there can be a better world. 
as Muhammad declares, O oh Allah, you are peace, and from you does peace emanate, and to you shall peace return. Bless us, please, O oh God, with peace. Amen, amin, inshallah. It's a beautiful piece. So we have about 10 minutes left. Is there anyone who would like to share Barbara Namias? Have you unmuted yet? Not yet? Okay. Mm. No. Um, does anybody else have I, some? I did it. Yes. There's somebody unmuted me, I think. Anyway, I'm here. Yay. Yay. So thank you, Sonia, for everybody who organized this tonight. I've been too alone with all these feelings and so happy to be with my peeps. <laughs> um, I would like to um, offer a Sanskrit prayer that many of you may know. <clears throat> Bear with me because I have a hoarse voice and a little bit of a cough. The prayer is Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. And I just want to read a little bit from the Gaia website. In times of great change and global uncertainty, we are sometimes at a loss to find stability and peace within, yet we are supported endlessly by the wisdom of the ages. Loka Samasta. Suki no Bhavantu is a mantra of power that assists us in our spiritual evolution and acts as a blessing for the world. So I'm going to sing it about six or seven times, chant it. Please join me um, or just meditate on it, whichever you would like. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to try to <laughs> see what happens. <clears throat> Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu 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 Loka Samasta Suki no Thank you for accepting my offering and my heart is with all of you as we move through these very challenging times. Sending out love to everyone and staying with you in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Barbara. Thank you for joining us. So glad to have you. So I think we're coming towards our, our time to start to, to shift out and, and come to a close. Let's see. Give me one moment. So these were words that were shared by one spirit that I thought were very eloquently put in a very simple way. 
Most of all, we pray for peace and for the restoration of sanity for humankind. For remembrance that hatred never ceases by hatred, but only by seeing the divine in one another and within ourselves. And with that, I'd like to pass this, pass our, pass on to Pippa, to Reverend Pippa, to close our, our gathering with a song. Thank you, everybody. Um, to be present to all of this and to all of you is quite remarkable. And I don't know about you, but my heart feels extraordinarily full. So blessings to you all and, and so much gratitude. Um, I had the great pleasure this month of holding not one, but two services for our community, UU Palisades and in the first one where we explored a little bit of the teachings of Parker J. Palmer, he spoke about what he calls the tragic gap, that place where we are forced to live and move and have our being, where we know what we strive and yearn and pray for, but the reality is so starkly different. And in moments like this, it's precious to remember that we are not in this tragic gap alone, but we are finding comfort and inspiration uh, from and with each other. And we are going to close with a video that I want to share with you. And it has a number of purposes. One is that quite symbolically, uh, as you'll see, these women are walking through no man's land and you'll recognize the terrain as soon as it starts playing. But I thought in a way it's a beautiful analogy of this very tragic gap that we're talking of. And as we learned last weekend together in my second service, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the Hindu festival Navratri, we are actually right in the middle or just a little past the middle of the Hindu festival of nine nights, where the goddess Durga and the divine feminine are celebrated and welcomed and remembered and honored. And as we learned, Durga is the, the fierce, loving protector of us and our world. And she is the one who helps us to triumph good over evil. So in that spirit, I want to share with you this video, which in a way circles back to the poem that I opened with. And the, po and the uh, video is called Women Wage Peace. And I felt it was lovely because in a way it's an embodiment again of that time we're in in Navratri, Navra, Navratri with that divine feminine calling out into every single gap and place in our world with fierce love and a prayer from the very depths of who we are and it's you'll hear sung in Hebrew, Arabic and English and with that, I want to say shalom, salam, and peace. Thank you.
איך אישת רוח ים מנשבת מי שם וכבשה מתנפנפת לצילי החומה סקטיר בעיש וסמא, מתחף ותחלם, בסלם
the words of Saima Kura, goddess, coach, and healer, let our hearts break open with this breaking of our world. Let them break hard enough that the only way to peace then is to bring them back together. And it is by being together that the only way for healing is through our united love and collective prayers as the family of humanity that we are. Amen. Amen. And inshallah. Thank you all for such beautiful, every person, all the beautiful sharing and awakening that was shared tonight. Every word, every action was a prayer or an intention, whatever your belief, towards what we hope for in this world. So thank you everyone and go in peace. If you like this video, please like us on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on the bell to be notified whenever we post a new video. Thank you.